Hi everybody, how are you doing? Jo here. I just thought I'd come in and have a little catch up with you. I hope you've had a, a lovely relaxing Christmas and that you're having a nice few days. Those sort of in between days, in between Christmas and New Year. Sometimes it's, it's a bit funny, isn't it? We don't know what to do with ourselves. So do you know what? I thought it was ideal time to come in and have a little crafty play, but also answer some of those questions. I've had quite a few messages off um, ladies and gentlemen over the last couple of days. And you've been saying sometimes at this time you don't know what to do with yourselves and your crafty mojo can go. He obviously goes on holiday for Christmas and it's how to entice him back. So I've just come in my craft room and had a little play and come up with this design and I thought we could create something similar together and I'll explain how and why I did it. So if you dare, welcome into my craft room. Come on in, get yourself comfortable. Now, <clears throat> I hope you had a lovely Christmas. Um, my throat is a lot better. I've had that horrible bug here in the UK. There's been one of these cold throat bugs and you know my throat's not the best. Um, and my last couple of videos, I've had a bit of a coughing fit. So I'm really hoping I won't do that today. So I'll apologise now if I do. But you know, when you come in my craft room, you open yourself up to, well, the world of Joe. You know, you have to just take your chance, don't you? So here we go. Now, often at this time of year, um, I find for me, the best thing in my craft room is I try to tidy up a little. Now, I know those are words that some of you don't like. You know, we, we don't have that in our dictionary, do we tidy up? But I always think for a new year, it's good if I can start with a bit more space. And one of the things I try and do is tidy up my stamps and sort them out into my A4 boxes where they all live. I have them divided up into sentiments, trees, animals, fairies. And while I was doing it, I thought, right, I'm going to choose a couple of stamps and then I'm going to challenge myself to make a design with it. And these are the stamps that I chose. Well, I started with Bella and then I thought I'm going to add just around it. And often I find when I'm tidying up, I have a lot of these this size pieces of card. They're too big to throw away, but it's amazing. Sometimes you think it's small. I mean, who'd have thought that that was that look? It is, it's that size. But to me, once it's got the ink on, it's obviously an illusion, but I think it looks bigger on here. Weird. Mind you, that's probably just the way my head is. Now, a few of you have asked as well, so when I'm tidying my craft room, I try and put things in spaces like my inks together, my glues together. And also I make myself a little note. Again, I'm a crafter. I love lists. I don't know about you, but I love a good list. And I make a list of things that I'm going to need in the coming year. I mean, I like to keep things like my double sided tape, my glue, and I like to have stocks of them. So I'll make a list of anything that I may need so that I don't want to get back into crafting January, February and suddenly find I'm running out and having to reorder. So that's the other thing I do. And I find this while I'm tidying up, while I'm looking at how my stickles are, what colours I need, that sort of starts getting crafty mojo back. Then I just find an off cut of card like this and I find I'm going to have a play. Now, I fancied creating a, a background. I love blending, as you know, and I thought we'd go for three random colours. Ones that wouldn't particularly, you'd think of blending together. So here, and we're going to use the oxides today, <clears throat> only because they're the ones I was tidying at the time. No other reason. So I've gone for the Kitch Flamingo, Seedless Preserves and Uncharted Marina. Now, you could use any colours you wish. I'm just, this is just what I went for. And I'm going to put them on my mat going down in colour. And again, I've been asked recently as to whether you would use how, what's best for blending. Now, I've got to be honest, for me, I have brushes, as you know, I have blending tools. And again, they're all in easy reach on my desk. Um, and I have these um, blenders. It, it's horses for courses. Some people, um, sometimes I use these, sometimes I use my brushes. For me personally, I find my brushes give me a lighter. I want more colour today, so I'm going to use my blender. I find I get a thicker amount of colour quicker. I can build it up. Um, and I love to use my brushes with my stencils. 
but it's very much like cooking. And for me, it's a little bit like whether you're a gas, an agar, a halogen. You know, we all like different types of, of um, devices for cooking and what's right for one isn't right for another. So my best advice, if you're one of the newbies who's who's messaged me and what my advice has been is to buy yourself a pack of the, the blenders, buy yourself a couple of brushes and have a play and just, and that's the best way because we can all give you advice as to what we find, but at the end of the day, it's you. And, and a lot of crafting is, it is about, um, we can give hints and tips, but you know what? We all find things our own way. We're all making our own journey, our own path. So that would be my advice. Now, you know me, I need a piece of my kitchen towel just to save putting dirty finger marks. And we're going to start with our lightest colour. And as I say, I'm using my blender today. And I want to add the colour in the middle for this particular design. So, and again, I always do circular motions just because for me it starts to blend the ink on either the, the blender or whatever you're using even if it's your brush I find that circular motion to start off with is good now we've done the middle now as you know I like to teach that when I do the middle I do the edge next so we're going to come in with the blue and I'm just going to add some blue at the base here and again my circular motions and I'm going to turn the card round we're not doing sort of an ombre today we're going to have our lightest colour in the middle but then we're going to go to dark on each of the, the the top and the bottom just something a bit different and you know often if you want to entice Mr Mojo back doing something like this is a great way because it's great fun and you know what he likes a bit of fun and now we'll go in this area here in the middle so I'm coming in with the purple and again, there are various purples you could choose. Now, it's not blended, but that doesn't matter. We're just adding the colour to start off with. And if you notice, get in that habit of taking it off on the lid. Right, so obviously it's not blended at all well. But what we do now is we work on these two areas. So I'm going to take the purple into the blue. And I'm doing this first because I've got the most ink on my blender. And we'll do the same at this side. And then I'm just going to bring it a little bit into the pink, just a little. Right, and then I'm going to come in with my blue. Maybe just pick a bit up off my mat. No point wasting that. And I'm just going to come over that edge there and then back in with my purple and just fuzzy that edge up a bit between the two. Maybe a bit of blue up the sides. Yeah, turn that round. And again... You can see, if I show you, you can see the difference of the one I've blended and the one I haven't. So again, we'll go in here and the purple into the blue. I'm not adding any more ink. I can pick a bit up off my mat if I want, but my blenders work beautifully with the ink that they've got there. They will move it and we don't want to waste any ink. So now we can work on this area, but I don't want to bring that purple too much in. So let's come in with the pink and blend the pink into that purple. It's a lovely way of creating a sky, this. And I just think for me, I'm almost going on the theory that this is my sky and, my, and that's going up into the sky. And this is coming down and it could be land, it could be sea, it could be anything. The imagination's there. It's just the colours I'm after and almost that feeling. So again, we'll just come in again. I'll go a little bit further with this. And just blend until you're happy. And I've got to be honest, I'm happy with that. That's the sort of effect I'm after. Now, originally, in my end design, I have some water splats look. Now, you could splat water now if you wanted, but you know me, I like to leave my water splatting until the end because I find I'd like to do my stamping next so I don't have to wait for my card to dry. Again, that's just me. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So we'll just clean this up. Bring Mr Inky Binky in. Now, I did think I'd wash him for Christmas, but that never happened. Things are a bit busy here. So do you know what? Maybe by 
next week. New Year might give him a wash. I don't know. What do you think? I think he looks rather good as he is, to be honest. Bit of a technical dream coat going on there. Now, what you'll find, because we've used oxides, you've got quite a coated finish on here. And it almost behaves like a coated cardstock. So I'm just going to dry it a little with my heat tool. I just find for me it makes it easy to stamp on. And again, whenever you dry the card on the front, always pop it on the back. And again, look at that. You know, if you wanted a pattern. So I'll tell you what, if I mess up this stamping on the front, you know what, I'm going to be using the back because I think that would make a fabulous design. There we go. And I'm going to stamp with VersaFine Claire and we'll use the Nocturne first. So where's Bella gone? Here we go. And I'm just going to turn that. Again, I can decide here. For some reason, I like this at the bottom and this at the top. Not sure why, but that's the way we're going to go. This is the time of year as well when I make a list of my VersaFine Claire because I always treat myself in spring to a couple of new colours. So I'm doing well. I've got quite a lot of them now. As I say, it's just, I think it's just another excuse for me to make a list. I think it starts with my new diary, filling things in there, and then I end up having to just do lists. And did you get any notebooks for Christmas? I love notebooks, diaries, lists. Right, now let's think. Let's put you there, right in that light bit. Now you have to watch, because with it being almost like a coated cardstock, there can be a bit of a bit of a slide, which is why quite often I will do my stamping first and then add my colour. But I fancy today just getting in here and having a play. Now again, give the ink time to soak in to silhouette stamp and we want the ink to soak through the Distress Oxide ink and into the card. And again, we put quite a good layer on, didn't we? So give it... Give it a chance to soak in, lift up. And as I say, because it almost behaves like a coated card, can you see how shiny that is? But don't worry. We just want to make sure we don't smudge that. So again, we can just give it a bit of a blot. And you'll see the amount of ink that comes off. You know I blot a lot. Look at that. And it just shows you... Because that oxide is given almost like a, the effect of a coated, coated cardstock, that's what happens. And it's important to show you this. So when you're trying this at home, if this happens, you know exactly why and you know what to do. I'm going to use the thistle stamp. Again, I love this stamp. And it's one that you wouldn't necessarily go to, but I, I mean, I love it. And I'm going to use Twilight. So I'm thinking like the sort of blue tones. And again, so when I stamp down and try not to let it, a little bit like stamping on acetate, it can slide a little. But if it does, we just make it look like that's our shadow. A little bit like our scenescapes. It's almost like that, that coated cardstock. Now, I'm going to have a few here. And again, I just find it easier to, as you know, hold my stamp and stamp this way. I think this one I'll just angle there. If I bring that round, you can see how that's starting to build up. So we've done the blue. So I'll just give my stamp a bit of a wipe with a wet cloth and then my inky binky and I'll come in with the black and I love to do this as you know I mean it's like this you know if you if Mr Mojo's gone we're not going to do anything too difficult just rely on techniques that you love you know you don't have to do anything as I say earth shattering just have fun so I'm thinking we'll add a couple of 
stamping in black and that will just bring it to the forefront. And again, we've left that perfect gap there. Lift that up. So you can see how, and that's just looking lovely with, and there's just that subtle difference with the blue and the black. But again, you can see how wet it is, look. Now, if you wanted to use a clear embossing powder, that would be beautiful because it's going to take a while to dry. But while that's drying, and I love this, have you got that shape? Just to sort of mirror that shape. We'll add some stamping in the bottom. And for this, I'm thinking of using purple first. So that's the Monarch. And then we'll come in with some black. And I've gone for one of my big old favourite, the Wildflower. And that's another thing. If Mr Mojo goes, get your favourite stamps out. The ones that you love using. You know, create a topper on a spare piece of card. Right, now we'll have some tall ones of these, I think. Oh, look at that. I love this stamp. And then a couple of smaller. And we'll add a bit of second generation there. And then a tall one this side. And maybe just a couple of angled ones there. Again, I'm thinking of that shape. Try and be mindful all the time to think of, you know, the shapes that you're using. And then because we want something light in the front, and again, you know, remember that tip of your acetate? The field grass is perfect to have in the front and we'll come in with the black. So we'll pop our field grass on here. The other thing at this time of year, you know, just to mention, I mean, look at this. I don't know if you can see there's glitter and all sorts on here. Really, it's a good time to almost give your stamps, she says as she drops it on the floor, <laughs> give your stamps a bit of a, a wipe and especially the back. So I've just wiped mine with my wet cloth and then dry it with my inky binky. Sometimes they get covered in glitter and, dare I say, a bit of Eric dog hair. And they can stop sticking on your block. So now's a good time to give them a bit of a clean. My block, I think, needs a bit of a clean. Because if you go in your craft room, you know, you don't have to craft. Maybe do a little bit of tidying up, a little bit of reorganising. And you'll be surprised how that makes you want all those crafty juices start. And they think, oh, you can't wait to get going. Or you find products that you haven't used. Now, how many of you have done that? I'm a big, I've bought that. I must admit the other week I bought some of this lovely Distress Glaze. Tracy was using it. And look at this, I haven't opened it yet. So that's, I'm just the same. So I need, that's on my list of things to do. And again, that sort of gets the excitement going. There we go. So if I just lift that up. You can see that lovely mixture at the bottom between the purple. And again, we've kept that purple and blue tones. Now, if I just get a clean piece. And I know what you're saying. I agree. I think now's the time I should maybe get a pack of clean copy of paper. Maybe start the new year with some clean paper. That would be a good thing. And all these bits I save. But look. Look how wet that ink is. So we've blotted that, but also I'm just going to use my heat tool on it because, again, belt and braces. I don't want to smudge it. And it's multifarious cardstock I'm using. Eversifying clay is a slower drying ink, remember. But because it's acting like it's going on the coated card, it's taking even longer to dry. And the last thing you want to do is smudge it when you've made such a lovely design. Dry from the back. Now I could just flick water on this, but I want to add that moon mask. So I'm going to come in with my acetate circle masks. Now, 
did this on my original, but I'm thinking, shall I use the the larger one? Make more of it. I think I will. Again, just to show you the difference, make more of a spotlight than a moon. I'm going to pop that there. And it's which colour to use. So what I'm going to do is come in with the pink first. And this I'm actually going to use one of my stencil brushes. And I'm just going to flick a little bit of pink. And you probably won't see this. But I want to almost tone the colours in. So then I'm going to come in with the purple. And just flick round. And if you notice, ink up on the lid and start at the base where the deeper colour is and then work my way round. And just gently, gently. Right, let's just see if that's enough. And look at that. That's enough. I don't need any more. So again, remember that gently, gently build it up. Like we say, we can add it, but we can't take it. How many times have you added too much and then you think, oh, no. So we'll give that a dry. And again, I've got my little bit of gold Posca on there so that I can see it if I put it down. I'm going to put that straight away because I don't want to lose it. So I want to add a little bit of detail to that. So I'm going to come in with my pan pastel and this one's that white fine pearl medium that I like to use. And I've got one of these little applicators here. And I'm just thinking of adding a little bit around. And I'm just going to use my finger to blend. Now again, if you haven't got this, you can use your um, pastel pencils, your white pastel pencil. You could use some of your mica powders. There's lots of things you could use. And it's just to almost give that sort of a, a halo type. If I bring it closer and just sort of catch it, you can see. And it doesn't always show up in photographs that. But I think when we're giving a handmade, it's nice that something does change as you look at it. Add a little bit more down there. And I don't need to fix this with a fixative. If I was using my pan pastel for the whole background, I would use a spray fixative. But because I'm just using it here, just rubbing it with my finger is enough to fix it. I must admit, I really love this. And I have to say, where it's slightly misstamped look, I love that because it almost looks like highlight and shadow. So that's another one of those little happy accidents. So don't be hard on yourself if things like that happen. Now, a couple of little finishing tricks. You know I like my finishing tricks. Now, I could use a white gel pen, but I'm coming in with a silver just because I just feel for this. I just want to keep it almost more subtle. But I'm just going to have to move my lamp a bit so I can see. So just on the edge of the flowers here, just going to add some little silver dots on the wild flower and just on my field grass. And again, they'd just be on the top here. And I, so as I say, you can use your white if you like. I just think it's nice sometimes to mix it up a bit. And as I say, if Mr Mojo's gone, entice him back by mixing it up a bit. It's good to do something just slightly different. So if I add a little bit here, so a little bit on the top of the hat look, little chin, and then down the arm, across the knee, little bit on a hand and then the wings beautiful and that's enough I personally avoid the face just because for me I'm, I'm just not good with faces but again as I say we're all different we play to our strengths you know which bits you like it might be you're happy you want to use your white gel pen as I say for me I'm just going for the silver today and I'm just gonna catch for me this lovely highlight is just going to catch on the base of these. It's not going to catch all up here. I want the dark there, but I like that. That's just enough. Maybe we'll just catch a little bit of this here. I'm just thinking. Now, 
Now I'm going to add my water splats. As I say, for me, I like to wait till all my stamping's done. If you're not keen on your water splats, you can leave it at this point. But you know me, I have a bit of thing about splats. And what I'm actually going to do is I don't want them in my highlighted area here. So I'm going to come in with, put my moon mask back on, get my fan brush, which is in my water pot, and come in now and add these lovely, lovely water splats. And again, depends on how many you want and how big they are. And also it depends on how long you leave it as to how um, white, how much bleaching there will be. So if you want, you can look, dab straight away. We'll lift this off. I think give that a little dab. I'll give this a wipe and I think we'll run our heat tool over. Put my mask going straight back in there and then I don't lose it. So we'll just quickly, a combination of dabbing with my kitchen towel and then the, the heat tool. And again, front and back. And if I just show you, and I just think that, I mean, how simple is that, but so effective. And you've got so many stamps that this would work well with. And instantly you've got a card here. So if you need that emergency, um, get well soon or thank you card. I mean, I bet you've got people that you need to thank for the festive season. You could batch make these, couldn't you? I mean, imagine using other colours, other stamps. Again, that mojo's getting going, getting coming back. Now, last little thing for me, I want some Posca splats. Now, again, a few of you have been in touch and said you struggle with your Posca. Um, my main advice to you is you need to boss your Posca pen. You need to show it who's boss and I'm boss, I'm telling you. Um, little tip, it's got a ball bearing in, you can hear that. So whatever size nib you've got, and it tells you on the side what size nib it is, what shape it is, whether it's a bullet or a point, um, shake, a good shake. That's the first thing. The second thing is the actual nib on the Posca works on a pump action. So if you're not getting splats, just pump it up and down. Now mine, as you can see, mine's working really well. If you don't get that, so let me just get another one that might not. So some of them you have to pump a little bit to actually get them to do that. Now what I would do with that is I can use that for painting or I can use that for my splats. I would get a paintbrush and use that but I want to show you how to use the Posca pen. Now once it's shaken and it's pumped I tend to use a brush to hit it with but I always suggest tapping here and holding the, the nib actually where you want the splats. The nearer you go almost like the larger the splats, the more concentrated, the further away, the larger the spread will be. So you get used to this just by using it and you can control where you want those splats. And again, a light tap, you'll get smaller splats. A heavier tap, look, you'll get larger splats. So again, it's just practice and you can direct that nib. Look, I want a few just down there. A few in that corner. That's it, lovely. Down this side, a few more. Yeah, that's lovely. Now, this one is the sparkle one. And I love these sparkle Posca pens. It's like just, obviously, Posca, but with that bit extra sparkle. And if I just bring that to show you, when that dries, it will just add. And I've gone for the blue to keep that lovely blue tone. Now, I'm just going to wipe that up. And we'll give it a quick dry. Again, if you've not got the Sparkle Posca pens, that might be something to put on your list. So there's our finished design. Now, I wanted my splats of the Posca to be near Bella. Again, if you wanted to keep this area completely clear, you could have put the moon mask, the circle mask back on. Now, if I bring in the original one. 
So again, you can see the difference here. I use the smaller circle mask here. I've used the larger one. And again, just shows you if I zoom in, just the difference. But again, for me, that's what helps with Mr. Mojo because just using a different size, mixing it up a little bit. But also if I move my lamp off, look, and it'll take away the glare, but you'll see the colours, how the colours really come through. I must admit, I'm going to make a note in my journal of this colour combination, possibly stick this piece in my journal and make a note because I love this colour combination and I'm going to be using that again. Bring my light back in, but we do get a bit of glare, I'm afraid. So I hope you enjoyed that. And do you know what? If you're struggling with your mojo, like I say, just get yourself an odd piece of card. Tidy up a bit. Get some ink. Make yourself a background. And then have some fun looking for stamps. Maybe go for a stamp you haven't used for a while. Is there a stamp you need? I bet there's new stamps you got for Christmas. Mm, do you need to use those? Maybe make yourself some backgrounds ready. Anyway, do you know what? I've really enjoyed coming and spending time with you today. I hope you enjoy the next few days and I hope you have a really, really lovely and happy new year. And I'll be back next year with Mindful Monday. And I'm so looking forward to spending time with you again. Be kind. Keep smiling. Much love and hugs from me. Bye for now.